European Parliament's second September session saw MEPs debating a variety of topics, including the security of gas supply, electronic trade and regulating biocidal products. But the session was marked mainly by the adoption of the famous financial package, which provides the EU with important supervision mechanisms for avoiding a repeat of a financial and economic crisis. Pedro Lopez reports. In an effort to learn all the lessons from the financial and economic crisis and to better protect our citizens and our economy, the European Parliament this week approved the creation of a new system of supervision for financial institutions. A deal was negotiated in record time that will allow the EU to keep its promise that the new rules would be ready for January 1, 2011. The new system will have a European authority supervising banks in London, another one to oversee insurance and pensions in Frankfurt, and a third one to control securities and markets in Paris. Above all, there will be a European Systemic Risk Board, chaired for the first five years by the President of the European Central Bank, to provide warnings of crises to come. All these authorities will be firmly independent and will have strong powers in relation to national financial watchdogs. For EPP member José Manuel García Magallo, Vice Chairman of the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee, and one of the main negotiators of the deal, the EU is making a historic step. We have a positive agreement. A positive agreement that is going to establish real European authorities with strong powers and that will be subject to the democratic control of this parliament. Authorities that will ensure all the banks play under the same rules in the European Union. That will have the power to impose their decisions on national regulators and even on individual financial institutions if they don't implement the measures required, so as to protect families and companies. Finally, authorities that will control too big to fail banks to avoid taxpayers paying again for the irrational exuberance of some financial institutions. For the Parliament, there was no other solution than more Europe for tackling the gaps in the supervision of the financial sector that arose during the crisis. With two-thirds of bank assets in the hands of only 40 big multinational entities in Europe, control could no longer stay in the hands of national watchdogs whose authority ends at their national borders. The price of the old system was too high, as the bill from the crisis for the taxpayer has been roughly the equivalent to 13% of the EU's GDP. As we head into winter and colder weather, most of us take it for granted that we'll stay warm in our homes. But how confident can we be in the energy supply that fuels our central heating systems? Well, thanks to new rules passed by Parliament, much more. Gunnar Larsen reports. In recent years, Europe's gas supply has been a source of concern. Cold snaps and unreliable deliveries have revealed weaknesses in national mechanisms and emergency plans. Parliament's Vice President, Spanish MEP Alejo Vidal Cuadras, has been responsible for drafting proposals to strengthen security in our gas supply. Following negotiations with member states, his proposals were debated in plenary. In the last few years, we've seen successive demonstrations of vulnerability in EU member states as far as energy is concerned in general and gas supply in particular. In the winters of 2005, 2006 and 2008 to 2009, the disruptions and blackouts became a genuine nightmare. The hard winters we've been having recently in Europe makes it even more important that we leave no stone unturned to prevent similar situations arising in the future. Coordinated action, infrastructure and stronger market mechanisms are some of the key points in his proposals. Non-market measures should only be used as a very last resort, Vidal Cuadras concludes, as the crisis two years ago showed there actually was enough gas in EU pipelines to supply all of Europe. Shortages were caused by national rules and lack of interconnecting infrastructures. The regulation on security of gas supply is a sea change under which member states will move beyond a purely national approach and will genuinely now be part of an ambitious European vision. There is strong support in Parliament for Vidal Cuadra's proposals and Europeans can expect to have a more reliable gas supply within a few years. A real single online market in the EU could be worth more than 100 billion euro in revenue, but existing cross-border barriers and a lack of trust by consumers are blocking its development.
This week, MEPs backed new proposals that aim to update rules governing online sales and tap into a market with huge growth potential. Internet and other new technologies have revolutionized the way we do business. Moving so fast that European legislation implemented in the 1990s is already out of date. Many member states have adopted their own updated rules, resulting in a lack of coherence at the European level. In practice, this makes it hard for businesses and consumers to sell or buy products from other countries online. And yet, the online market has huge potential to increase European growth. MEPs this week backed the plan by Spanish MEP Pablo Arias Echeverria that aims to tackle some of the barriers preventing the development of a real online single market in Europe. E-commerce is a tool with enormous potential for us to relaunch and improve the competitiveness of our economy and also to strengthen the internal market. It's a tool that could create huge value and offer major opportunities for European citizens and companies in these times of crisis. Arias Echeverria proposes a package of measures that include reinforcing access to the Internet, consolidating consumer protection rules across member states and implementing the prohibition of discrimination against clients based on their nationality or place of residence provided for in the services directive. He also wants to create an EU trust mark to increase consumer trust by offering a guarantee of security for buying online. And there are incentives for business in there too, with simpler VAT and intellectual property rules avoiding the application of costs. Either we take the necessary measures with energy, decisiveness and leadership or we fall behind our competitors. Many sectors of Europe's economy depend on the use of biocidal products. This week here in Strasbourg, MEPs have been voting on a report to tighten rules governing those products. Stephen Jones has this report. Biocides are important in everything from agriculture to water treatment, from gardening to pest control. But there are concerns about the impact of these products on the environment and human health. EPP Group member Christa Klaas of Germany is the Parliament's rapporteur on this draft legislation. The European Parliament, and the EPP Group in particular, has been at the forefront of efforts to improve health and well-being of EU citizens through environmental legislation. And this proposal will further enhance consumer protection, according to the rapporteur. The exclusion criteria have now been clearly specified. Materials that are dangerous will not get certified. But we must also have the possibility, which we must keep, to handle rat and mouse infestations or insect plagues. This can be decided on a national or regional level. In short, consumers will get more security in the future thanks to this European-wide authorization. But this latest regulatory proposal is not just about environmental protection. It's about enabling the free movement of such products throughout the EU and harmonizing rules in the Union's 27 member states relating to marketing and safety. The report was approved by MEPs. That's all for this session, but to keep up to date in the meantime, visit our website, eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching.